And I tell you, you've got to give the Bulls a tremendous amount of uh, credit, uh, resilience, whatever, you know, whatever adjective you want to use, because not only did they- Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody's doing great. Hope everybody had a great uh, trading week. Uh, let's get right into the action. So ever since May 20, May 20 is a big day uh, for the bull for this last rally of the markets. And I think by now uh, everybody knows why if you've been watching this broadcast. May 20 is where technology really woke up. This is where bulls uh, reclaimed the 50-day moving average. Again, the 50 is a super important area uh, that shows who's really macro control uh, of the sentiment, right? If you, it's underneath the 50-day moving average, usually is a sell signal and many, many sell signals. Uh, if it's above the 50-day moving average, it's super duper bullish. And since May 20, uh, the monster run in the mega, uh, mega cap space or just technology in general has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, I think investors have been happy. I think everybody's been uh, you know, truly, truly uh, blessed on expanded measure potential, a lot of moves. And this week was just number one, a short week. Uh, it was 4th of July weekend. So the, the action started on Tuesday. This was the first week uh, in the, since May the 20th that the Bulls how, had to show their character, had to show uh, that, you know what, they were going to give up the ship, that they were going to fight through adversity. Because again, when you have a linear market, if you've been watching this uh, video just in the last week, you, you know the dangers of a linear market because when they do pull, just because gravity is real, the stocks that have the biggest runs always get pulled the hardest. And this week, you know, you, you have to really, if you're a bear, I mean, look, very, very tough to uh, be very, very happy uh, with number one, with the performance of the bear side of the market this week. But number two, I mean, how can you turn around and, and have a really good feeling about the sell side in the market going into this week. It's very, very tough to say so. We had, just to give you an idea, how strong the bulls did today and how great the bulls did this week. They had an intraday pull, right? Intraday pull of, talk about six points on the queues on, what was it, on Tuesday, right? We had another intraday pull, a massive pull on Wednesday, okay? And if you guys remember, excuse me, if you guys remember on Wednesday's, Wednesday night's broadcast, if you go to Wednesday's video, because Thursday there's no video, uh, if you go to Wednesday's video, this is the first time I was sell biased in a very, very long time, just because of the data that we kept on collecting from Tuesday session, Wednesday session. And you had to ask yourself, how many times can you test the bottom of that channel before breaking down? And, you know, going into Thursday's session, I said, look, um, look, I'm not saying we're going to get destroyed here, right? But you have to be prepared. There's a lot of value on the sell side into Thursday's session. And what happened on Thursday, if you guys remember, um, my game plan was completely burnt, right? It was done because the Dow gapped down 500 points, literally down 500 points. So anything that I wanted to short uh, going into Thursday's session was gone. And the craziest part about Thursday's session was, what I thought was going to happen potentially for the whole day happened pre-market. And you had a gap down literally to the bottom of the range on Thursday session, which was the 10-day moving average, right? The 10, literally the whole day's average range happened pre-market. And the one thing that we constantly talk about uh, when you have a bull market, okay, and you have these big aggressive gap downs, the value is always to the upside. Again, if you've been watching this video for a long time, you kind of know this by now. Uh, just because when you're shorting into the hole, which basically means an emotional roller coasters, Pandora box, and you have a bull market and rising 60 minute support or rising daily support, that's where people's frustration and aggression and fear kicks in and emotional sellers are kicking into, into realistic buyers and technical buyers. And that's exactly what happened Thursday. And we aggressively held support again, started going higher. And the question was going into Friday's session was, well, we held the bottom now three times in a row. So if we would have had, a, if we would have had for example, a flat open 
uh, a flat or slightly open um, day on Friday. Can the bulls hold on one more time? I mean, how many times can the levy, right? Can the levy be tested, tested, tested before the dam gets broken? And I tell you, you've got to give the bulls a tremendous amount of uh, credit, uh, resilience, whatever, you know, whatever adjective you want to use, because not only did they hold the bottom range, they had a really, really good aggressive rally uh, towards the end of the week, uh, led by the mega cap names that got pulled random times on Wednesday, on Thursday, excuse me, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, and Thursday's gap down, everything held. Uh, you had monsters continue to lead the way. Uh, the apples of the world and Amazon, if you're watching this broadcast, you know, broke out. Uh, we talked about about that 30, uh, 3750, 3720 to 3750 level. Uh, Amazon traded all the way up to the 3760 level. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal move. And the one thing about Amazon is when you started seeing the market sell off, they weren't just coming for the 3,800 calls anymore for next week. They're coming for the 3,900, right? We saw some 3,900. We saw some selective uh, 4,000 calls as well for August. But you can tell how much really big convection, uh, conviction and money flow there is, not just on Amazon. Uh, you saw Apple as well. They were coming for the 150s, the 155s, the 160s I saw some selective buying as well. Even Tesla, right, that has been uh, kind of has been kind of really all over the place. It was an awesome trade for us uh, off this 50-minute channel. It's got rejected twice off the top of the range. But even Tesla, on that gap down on Thursday, that 500 gap down, it held, uh, held reclaimed the 50-day moving average, rallied all the way to the 10, excuse me, to the five-day moving average, which is short-term sentiment for this week. So Tesla's like literally a stone throws away testing back uh, into the upper channel again. So the market looks really good right now. The names that got tested, got sold, came right back up, as you can see here, especially Thursday on Facebook, just mirrored NASDAQ 100, uh, held the rising support. And again, just like Tesla, it's one day away from confirming to go back to the channel. Uh, even a name like, uh, even a name like Boeing, right? Even a name like Boeing that we talked about Wednesday, uh, Wednesday session, you know, for a possible short, it gapped down to the possible measure potential, just rally. And, and Boeing, look at the 60-minute view on Boeing. Look how tight this damn thing is, right? And you're seeing a lot of channels that are super, super tight like this. You see Boeing super tight. You see Roku. Look how tight Roku is, right? Super tight on Roku. You got Tesla, right? You got Look at that, how tight these channels are getting. So if the bulls continue to hold the upper hand and don't show any weakness uh, in the first day or so uh, of the new week, if bears can't seize back control, you can have a, you, you can have more upside uh, ahead. Uh, the one group that I, I, I can't stomach anymore, and if you guys notice, I like I stopped talking about this group, is the Chinese stocks. Uh, you know, Alibaba used to be just a really good stock, right? A great trader, and you could see by the last year, you know, th th there's so much toxic. So much toxic paper behind these Chinese stocks. Nothing to say again. Alibaba is a phenomenal company, at least on paper, right? At least how they portray. But you could tell there's so much baggage in these names. The Alibabas of the world, uh, the Baidu's of the world, the FUTU. They had, you know, had a really, really good run. Uh, the Billies of the world. I, I, I'm just trying to stay away from them. You know, I, I get these questions all the time. Well, what do you think about Alibaba? What do you think about, you know, Baidu? You know, the, the one thing with these stocks is when, as soon as they look like they're about to break out, they go on a six day, you know, sell off. As soon as it looks like it's, it's about to sell off more, they wake up and go on a four day. Just, I think there's so much better value uh, in the market with companies that are, you know, more accessible, uh, to all the self-regulatory organizations that they can monitor on the domestic side of it, you know, like an Amazon, like a Facebook, like an Apple of the world. You know, why have the headache? You know, why have the random gap ups, gap downs, these, these, these you know, noise, uh, random PRs come in overseas? Just leave these things alone. If you're, if you believe in an Alibaba and you think, look, the stock can be three, four hundred dollars a share in the next five years, just invest in it and just kind of put it away. But as far as trading vehicles. You know, look, I, I kind of want to stay away. Uh, there's just much, much more seamless things that you can participate in the market without having uh, major headaches. And that's about it. Right. And if you look at the and if you look at the surface, the scoreboard, 
uh, into the tape for this week, you're not going to get really anything out of it. If, you, if you're not an uh, active participant in the market, you know, the indexes show fractional gains, and that's phenomenal how many times they were tested. And it's like, it's like Rocky Balboa, how many times can he got... Did he, did he get a you know knocked down by Ivan Drago? He kept on getting up, getting up, getting up, and finally Rocky, uh, Rocky finally uh, knocked him out, and that's exactly what happened uh, this week uh, for the Bulls. And you know the Bears just just dropped the ball. They could they could have taken over. Uh, we had a linear market that you know was going up for two months straight. They could have easily taken off control and at least had a three four day sell off at least this rise in support. And they just couldn't even do that. So uh, kudos to the Bulls. Um, you know. Bears better like next time. Uh, but what this is setting up uh, for uh, this week is some really, really uh, good setup. So let's talk about some setups. Again, sometimes you don't have to uh, you don't have to really dissect of what happened the previous week. It's pretty obvious. I think price action uh, really spoke the truth, uh, really spoke reality. And it doesn't make a difference what you think of the market. Uh, long term, short term, price action is always right. Our opinions mean nothing. You can have uh, you can collect data have an opinion, have a bias, but if that bias goes in completely the opposite direction, I mean, again, it's very, very, it's very painful and um, very irresponsible to kind of fight uh, the trend. So for now, uh, the trend is really good. So let me give you guys some names uh, that I do like for uh, next week. Uh, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of really good names. Let me give you guys some names that I kind of like. Uh, Overstock looks pretty good. It had a really big move. Now, again, there's a tr stock trade as fluid as everybody wants. Probably not. But I think if this thing gets had a monster, monster move, closed right at the upper uh, upper Bollinger Band, uh, which is a pregnant pause, all it needs to do is confirm this band, and you potentially could have a move uh, to the June 25th highs of 101. If 101 takes out, you have a lot of room again, assuming the market uh, continues to be strong. The value play in overstock is obviously try to buy it on rising support. Uh, if shorts can get trapped on rising support, you can get a squeeze back. Uh, to red to green. Uh, Dick Sporting Goods. I was in Dick Sporting Goods yesterday. I had a lavish spending spree. I think I spent about uh, $40 on a couple of pairs of shorts. Right? Anyway, Dick Sporting Goods has been kind of going sideways now for a pretty long time, right? Pretty long time here since May the 27th. Is this finally the week that it gets above the, the top of the channel here and starts making its aggressive move? I would love to see some action in, in the options market in this thing. I would love to see uh, some conviction short term out of the money buying, but at least you have to pay attention to this thing. Again, the longer, remember, this is the keynote. The longer a stock stays in the channel, the longer the distribution takes place, the harder the aggressive nature uh, takes place. And there was no bigger move uh, of that sentiment as snow. If you guys, uh, congratulations for all you guys who had snow in the webinar. Uh, again, this thing just went absolutely nuts. You can see how long the distribution was uh, from June the 8th, uh, all, you know, talking about a month distribution and snow just went absolutely ballistic. Again, uh, any dip in snow, uh, and, and by the way, just a side note on snow, just from the options market, yesterday on Friday, they were coming for the 260s, 270s, then they started coming for the 300s, okay? They started coming for the August 300s. So this thing looks like it wants to test this 274 level, just like uh, just like overstock. If it, any weakness in the morning, uh, try to get some on a 60-minute dip or the confirmation uh, from Friday's channel. Uh, that looks good uh, as well. Look at Avago, right? A semiconductor name, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be the craziest, you know, stock in the world, but this is a nice channel. This is a good distribution channel. Uh, this is getting very, very tight. And once it starts taking out this channel here, you have room uh, into the 500s. Again, uh, keep an eye. I think it's more of a swing uh, than a day trade. Evago is not exactly the, the stock you want to quote unquote day trade for cash flow. Uh, but if it starts attacking and closes above this channel here, you do have, you know, you do have two, uh, you do have about, you know, 20, 25 points of upside as well. And let me give you one more name. Look, look at look at Coinstop, uh, Coinbase, Coinstop, all these things, right? Coinbase is, you know, again, Coinbase is one day away from getting really, really aggressive. Um, so unless like Bitcoin dies, and I really don't, you know, follow Bitcoin that much, but unless Bitcoin dies, and you know, if this thing could start confirming this top upper channel here, I'm not saying it's gonna go back to, you know, to the IPO highs of 430, but boy, oh boy, look how much, this is all airspace. There's absolutely no, you know, there's no supply from, from here to all the way over here. So again, anything is possible. So guys, have a great weekend. Uh, some updates, uh, some days you don't have to really, uh, you know, really dissect every single hair 
with a fine tooth comb. Sometimes, again, keep it simple, stupid, right? Price action speaks loudest, and the Bulls did a fantastic, fantastic job. Guys, have a great day. Have a blessed weekend. With God's help, I'll see all you guys on Monday. Take care.